Good afternoon, brothers. It's great to have you on this call uh, as we have an open house with, with Brother Holland as he um, is in pursuit of district director, district director um, for ANCA, the state of North Carolina. Our big thing um, this evening is to make sure brothers get a chance to ask the, their questions of Brother Holland and why he sees fit or why we see fit to elect him um, as the new Anchor District Director. Before we get into it, um, Brother Colin, I would love for you to state um, where you pledge and all that good stuff. Oh, perfect. So yeah, I'm a Spring 2008 initiative at Admiral Lambda Chapter, uh, seated down in uh, Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, I was a solo, so I was an ace and a tail. Uh, I was initiated into a chapter of 13, and uh, we have now grown to 47. So it's been a good time. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> uh, and currently, you are? The Area 5 mm -hmm. Director uh, right. for awesome. the district. Yep. So that is every, um, you know, chapter from Salisbury to Cullowee, uh, where the New Zeta chapter is seated. Uh, up on the mountain. So uh, when I'm not doing the work at the district, I'm the regional director of technology. Uh, so that is, you know, regional te technology service for, <clears throat> give me a second, the, the seven states that make up the southern region. Uh, and I help with the um, convention technology for the general convention as well. So okay, that's what we do uh, from an alpha perspective. Going forward, Mm -hmm. Your theme going forward, Anchor Reimagined, advancing the people, the process, and the policy. When yes. you think about Anchor Reimagined, um, take us through that. Take us through what you're standing on, and that's advancing the people, the process, and the policies. Right. So when we talk about advancing uh, people, process, and policy, we stand on uh, the people, uh, Brother Hickman. Uh, it's really an opportunity for this administration uh, to put in place the supportive services that the brothers need, uh, be it, uh, you know, physical services, be it mental services, uh, really providing uh, the continuum of support uh, that we've been talking about to this point in the campaign uh, where every brother feels supported. Uh, in that, we want to make sure that we get a district surgeon general appointed. Uh, that's going to be very important as we continue to do the work uh, of the district internally and externally. Uh, from a process perspective, I want to get the Emerging Leaders Initiative uh, off the ground and up and running because succession planning is a really important part uh, of the work that we do uh, from a fraternal and organizational perspective. Uh, we don't have uh, the leaders uh, of tomorrow already today, uh, then we're going to find ourselves in trouble. Uh, and then finally, when we talk about you know, advocacy and education, uh, the LDCEI is going to be a very important program. Uh, and we want to get the life skills uh, mentorship curriculum uh, in place uh, so that we can support brothers um, uh, and and the the kids and the communities that we serve uh, holistically uh, through the platform. Uh, one of the cool parts about my travels across the state, uh, we had a really engaging conversation uh, with the Rocky Mount chapter uh, this past weekend where we talked about the three, seven, nine, twelve strategy. Uh, and that, uh, from an advocacy and education perspective, uh, really speaks to, you know, making sure we have literacy shored up for our minority males by third grade. And we uh, talk about STEM and STEM engagement by seventh grade. And we get the ninth graders ready to have a really successful academic career in high school. And then in, by the 12th grade, we're preparing to transition them into college and hopefully become a future alpha man. Uh, so in my travels, you know, we've had a really like I said, engaging uh, conversation uh, with every chapter uh, about the things that are important to them. Uh, but that 37912 strategy was was too good to leave on the table. Uh, so I told those brothers, don't be surprised if you hear it again. I don't turn down good ideas. So yeah. uh, that is the people, the process, and the policy uh, in a nutshell, just hitting the high points uh, of what we want to get done uh, in my administration. Inside of your platform, is there anything that is trending that you see every time you stop at a city, at an area? Is there one thing or two things that are trending that 
everyone in Alpha or in Anchor is talking about? So the one, the first thing that's trending is college brother support. Uh, college brother support post COVID is paramount. We got to get our numbers back up. Uh, that's what the standard of seven commission is designed to do. Uh, we want to make sure that we have at least seven uh, college brothers on each campus where we have a college chapter. Uh, and the five part plan that we put together is designed to do just that. Uh, and the second thing that I hear a lot about <laughs> outside of that is uh, the advocacy and education uh, around the the minority males and getting them ready uh, to go from middle school to high school. Uh, that is a really big thing that I've heard and we've had engaging dialogue uh, around in all of my stops to this point. So, um, you know, of course, the brothers need support, but those are the top two things that I hear about and have really robust conversation around uh, when I stop. Mm. I, I want to keep you there on the college tip. Um, mm -hmm. If elected as our um, anchor district director, what role do you think or should college brothers play inside of your administration? Yeah, so the college brothers, uh, Brother Hickman, they're going to have a vital role. Uh, I want to make sure that I have two to three uh, college brothers on every standing committee. Uh, I think it's a great way for them to learn and a great way for them to get engaged at the district level. Uh, you know, our area director, assistant area directors uh, will also uh, be in leadership roles. I want to make sure that the College Brother Affairs Committee is sourced solely of college brothers. Uh, that is their committee. I want them to run that committee. Uh, so that means that one of the committee chairs in my administration will be a college brother because he will run the College Brother Affairs Committee. Um, moreover, uh, I see them really uh, providing input uh, around the Standard of Seven Commission. Uh, so when we get the College Brother Affairs Committee together, when we get C2C, when we get Alpha Advisors, when we get them all to the table, uh, our College Brothers will have a large part uh, in what that strategy looks like because they're on their campuses. They understand their needs. Uh, so that five-part plan will be molded uh, and shaped uh, by their input. Definitely. Oh, oh, and let me keep you there just a little longer. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Some, yeah. Some brothers only have graduated from HBCUs, and sometimes the number of college brothers is not a problem. Um, and I saw that I've seen that and witnessed that as well. Yeah. Uh, I am now. I was a, an advisor uh, for for UNCW brothers, and now I'm back in that role, and we start to see uh, the cyclical uh, things that those brothers that are at predominantly white schools go to where it's five and mm -hmm. then next semester everybody graduating is one and then yeah. there's six and then there's four right, right, there's right. three you know what what is there any plan for those brothers that are on those campuses um to have support or resources so they just don't feel like oh man it's just it's just us it's just two of us you know right yeah when i when i talked to the brothers uh the sigma delta chapter you know they expressed you know, with the numbers being so small, it feels like you immediately have to come in and focus on business, uh, which is an unfortunate reality uh, of running a college chapter. Uh, so what I want to do is start the runway early. Uh, we have to make sure that we have alumni brothers on campuses actively helping our smaller chapters. Uh, that's what we uh, attempted to get done with the, the tailgate series that we had down here in Area 5. Uh, we had alumni presence on college chapter uh, campuses so that when the campus community came by, they saw Alpha in mass. <laughs> and we were fairly successful uh, with our turnout. Uh, but in addition to that, we also need to make sure that when we talk about um, recruiting or you know getting in this race for talent, as Brother Bray called it when I connected with him this weekend, we got to start early. So getting to the freshman minority males early. We all understand that Alpha can somewhat be cost prohibitive, but if we can empower those young men that have interest in Alpha uh, to go ahead and start putting that money away, uh, we can get them early. We can get them engaged. Uh, I think we need to cater to them short of giving them the grip uh, because they are the resource that we need to tap. We can't wait till they become sophomores and freshmen because by that time, they've got into other interests and other things 
Uh, it needs to start early when it's fresh and it's new and we can hold their attention and keep them engaged until their sophomore year. I think if we start that runway early along with the Standard of Seven Commission, uh, with the supportive services we're putting in place for the college brother and the Alpha advisor, uh, we'll, we'll stop to see, we'll stop seeing rather that cyclical trend. Uh, we'll see more consistency uh, and desire to join Alpha because we have everybody uh, at the table doing their part. Thank you. Um, brothers that are on, thank you for being on. If you got on late, I appreciate you for jumping on. I'm Brother Brandon Hickman. We are having an open house with Brother Holland um, as he runs for Anchor District Director. If you do have a question, please raise your hand so we can go into that question and um, see what Brother Holland has to say. I want to shift that that last conversation or that last question that you asked. I want to shift that into small chapters on the graduate side. Um, I know a lot of times, and you, I've asked you this question uh, before, uh, when we get to uh, districts, sometimes inside of competition or awards, um, it seems as if sometimes the, the smaller chapters are kind of jumped over. They're doing the same amount of work, or, or even if more, because yeah. it's, less of, it's less of the brothers. But sometimes, right. you know, it's just like, oh, well, we know these guys are going to win because it's 90 people in the chapter. Uh, how? What is your take on smaller chapters inside of, of Anchor kind of getting it just due? My take on that is simple. The awards chair for district conference is going to have some work to do. Uh, he's going to have to help us take a look at um, our award criteria. Uh, I would like for it to be percentage-based and not volume-based. Uh, and I'd also like to do small and large chapter. Uh, that is one thing that I talked about early on uh, when I, uh, I talked about seeking this office. Uh, we got to figure out what that demarcation point is between small and large. Uh, but I do think that recognition uh, for small and large um, team competition or chapter competitions, uh, so to speak, is appropriate. Uh, now, the sticky point that we have to get figured out is, you know, who goes on to compete at the next mm -hmm. level? You know, because everybody's why they want their just do, they want their opportunity to move on to the next level. Uh, so that's the part that is going to take all of us giving buy in and giving input uh, to solve. But small and large chapter uh, awards and recognition uh, would definitely be on the table in my administration. Great. And staying with administration, <laughs> what the administration currently that's going on right now inside yeah. of ANCA. Um, do you see any successes there? And if you do, what will you take with you to move forward if you're elected as district director? So that's a really good question. Uh, Brother Pittman, and I, I shared this on the, the last town hall, Brother Pittman is a very spiritual brother. And we have the Tuesday morning uh, prayer call. Uh, I think the prayer call uh, is successful because it's been a consistent program that has went on throughout the course of the administration. So I want to take the basis of that program and grow it. Uh, I want to make sure that we're multi-faith uh, and multi-consumable um, uh, is what I'm after. I want to make sure that brothers can get uh, their faith uh, in a digestible format, uh, be it the website, be it a newsletter, uh, be it a, a text where you go read a quick scripture uh, be it the Tuesday prayer call on some frequency. Uh, I think that making that experience more immersive uh, is something that I want to take uh, from this administration and add value to. So, okay, great. We have, do have a brother, um, brother Davis from the floor. Go with your question. Good evening, brothers. Uh, brother Ron Davis from Alpha Phi Lambda. Good evening, um, Brother Holland. Uh, my hey, Brother Davis. Hey, man. Uh, my question is. Um, what do you think or what would be your vision as to ways to better co increase or increase collaboration uh, between the five areas of the district? You know, if, the, if you think there, if there's a need of that, you know, you, you think there should be, and if so, what would you do to enhance that? Yeah, so uh, that's a really great question, and I want to go back to the continuum of support. What I want to do in the continuum of support is create affinity groups. Uh, around preventative health engagement. 
And what those affinity groups look like is if, you know, Brother Hickman, you like to run 5Ks and, you know, you're down in Area 1 and Brother McFadden runs 5Ks in Area 5, uh, you know, you guys getting together on some cadence or some virtual format to connect with each other across areas. Because one thing I do want to add to the district conference schedule uh, is an affinity group uh, space. Like, you guys are connecting with each other outside of the conference. I want to make sure you can connect with each other in the conference, and that'll be a really cool feature. Uh, so we have brothers that want to go do service projects in that affinity group space. Uh, they go do that. They take pictures. They document it. Uh, so then it gives us an opportunity to get out into those communities uh, and be active uh, and be visible uh, outside of just being in business sessions. Uh, so that'd be the first way uh, that I would look to make sure we got all of our uh, areas connected together, uh, Brother Davis. Thank you, Brother Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions from the floor right now? Please feel free. If you do have one, definitely raise your hand. Okay. Brother Jenkins. Hey, good afternoon. Um, good evening, brothers. Good evening, uh, Brother Holler. Um, hey, good evening, brother. Hope you're well. I just have um, just a quick question. Um, I'm just curious to know what you think the most pressing issue is right now facing, um, I'm going to say Alpha, but I'm really, if you could just kind of focus that in on Anchor. Mm -hmm. um, what is the most pressing issue that you that you see that, that, that Anchor is faced with and what are your plans to combat that issue from your strategic plan that you've created? Oh, perfect. So our our most pressing issue is our college brother in numbers. Uh, so the standard of seven commission <laughs> is going to be designed to tackle that. Uh, I think that and I know that, you know, probably day one uh, in the elect phase, uh, not the sworn in phase, but the elect phase. Uh, I have to go staff up, and I want to staff up starting with the Alpha Advisors, the College Brother Affairs, and C2C committees, because when I'm sworn in, uh, God's will, uh, we need to hit the ground running uh, with getting that strategy enacted, uh, because we have to get our numbers to at least seven across the board, uh, because if we can't, then that gives us an opportunity to have conversations early on in the administration on how we may or may not need to reorganize the district. Uh, for optimal success. So getting our college brothers focused uh, and helping us with that effort, getting uh, that particular um, task uh, tended to uh, would be the first thing that I want to focus on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Jenkins. <clears throat> when you talk about um, those groups getting together, are we you you plan on carving carving out some time where and we I talked about this to my chapter where we have brotherhood a little brotherhood before business where we we carve out some time to to get together inside of that inside of our our districts is, is that the plan? Uh yes, definitely. I mean we we have to find commonality uh, in working with one another. Uh, so we'll definitely do quote unquote icebreakers. I mean, it won't be anything cheesy, but it'll be something that we can use to uh, connect us together around the work that we're trying to do. Uh, I believe in leveraging best practices, and I believe in leveraging people that are good at uh, driving out outcomes. Uh, so we'll look to make sure that we have some scrum masters or, uh, you know, practicing agilists that can come in and help us build our project charter uh, and make sure that when we get the project charter done, we can socialize it with the district. So the district understands, hey, this is priority one. This is what we're hitting the ground running with. Uh, and we're going to ask for your support over the, the first nine months leading into the first district conference. I have a question. Yes, sir. So, Brother Holland, how do, it, it seems, I think, every district convention I've been to in the last, I don't know, probably almost every last one, it just seems like the same thing is it's like there's nothing new to engage the brothers or to entice the brothers to come to a district convention. It always seems like it's the same type of session or like I, it, I feel as though now 
I feel as though now it's just not engaging enough for brothers. I know there's a you know brotherhood aspect, but how do you plan on improving the experience of a district convention? For example, I remember when on the brother Manners, he devoted one day to where we did a service project with one of our national programs, which kind of made it all inclusive to brothers to come near and far to do that project together. Lately, it just seemed like it's dropped off and then we are back to the same monotone type of delivery, come here, come there, and it's nothing. And I think I've seen the numbers decrease from the district convention to where we are, when they showed the numbers at the last time, we only had like 80 brothers registered. In the years before that, you know, brothers would be registered for the district convention. And yeah, I think yeah. new brothers are seeing that. Why go? Because there's nothing appeasing about going. Is there anything you want to do different to make it more enticing for brothers to, to come and kind of enjoy the brotherhood aspect, but also do things that's worthy of more meaningful training or more brotherhood engagement as it relates to something that can impact North Carolina as a whole and that brothers can take back to their areas and pick up where we left off with the district. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna start uh, with kind of walking through the experience of the conference, uh, having assisted with conferences here in the past six years. Uh, it starts in the planning. We gotta get more predictive in where we're going to be so that we can communicate to the brothers where we're gonna be in a more timely mm -hmm. manner. So I really see the runway to going wherever we're going starting nine months in advance. Uh, month nine, you got to have to save the date out. Uh, somewhere between month five and month four, you got to open up registration. When you open up registration, it's really that advertisement point on what the highlights of your conference are going to be. Uh, and what I'm committing to doing is providing a scorecard uh, at every district conference uh, going forward in my administration. Uh, everybody that knows me that I'm very short on talking, uh, but I'm long on delivering results. So with that, I want to make sure that when I get up to give my address, we're talking about the roadmap that I have shown you over the past 60 days. Uh, and I want to make sure that as we roll out of one fraternal year uh, using the district conference as that demarcation point into the next fraternal year uh, where we're working on whatever the strategies and recommendations are for that year. Uh, that our workshops and our brotherhood engagement is centered around what's on the roadmap for the year to come. Uh, we want to come in and celebrate our successes and talk about what we got done uh, and be very succinct with it. And we want to make sure the workshops are setting up the next 12 months of service in our communities. Uh, I feel like that's what the district conference needs to be uh, and because it, it needs to be worthwhile. Uh, there needs to be leadership aspect uh, to it. Uh, and there needs to be, again, the brotherhood engagement that you mentioned. Uh, this past district conference in Gastonia, you know, we did that uh, unified or we did that, you know, joint, if you will, hospitality suite where everybody was invited. And we had a band and we had cigars outside and we had games. Uh, like to me, that's what hospitality needs to look like in the future. Uh, based on the conference feedback that we got, uh, that was one of the highlights of the conference. So if brothers like that type of engagement, we don't need to go away from it. Uh, so that is one thing I want to make sure that we plan for. Uh, but it really starts in the, the initial planning of finding your location and, you know, negotiating in earnest with the property. Uh, you know, we have to create a win-win. We're not going to get everything we want. They're not going to get everything they want. But they want us there because they understand the economic value and power that we have being in their community. Uh, so we do have that as a bargaining chip and we have to use it, but we got to use it earlier on in the process so that we're not bent over the table in the 11th hour trying to negotiate with a property. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> if we can stay right there on the brotherhood, can you go a little bit more in depth on the Alpha Ambassador Program? Oh, yeah. So the Alpha Ambassador Program, uh, Brother Hickman, is, is going to be a program designed to engage our senior brothers. Uh, our senior brothers have a wealth of knowledge uh, that we haven't given them a platform to exercise or share. Uh, so the Alpha Ambassador Program is going to have a mentoring component uh, where brothers of my age and younger 
uh, or even older uh, up to senior brother status can connect with uh, our senior brothers on whatever topics they want to talk about, be it career changes, be it, you know, change of scenery from moving from one city to the other, uh, starting a family, family dynamics changing with kids graduating. Uh, most senior brothers have seen it all. Uh, so we want to make sure that the Senior Brother Affairs Committee uh, serves as a steering uh, committee of sorts for the executive leadership team, as well as provide that uh, mentorship uh, touch point. Uh, in addition to our senior brothers have more time than the working alpha professional. Everybody would agree, I would hope. So with that, let's get them involved in daily uh, or daytime civic engagement. Uh, so there's something going on uh, in your local community uh, that you want to get involved in. Uh, let's task our senior brothers with going to get that information and bringing it back to the chapter. Uh, I feel like that gets them engaged. Uh, that gives them a sense of value and purpose that they may or may not have right now in their current local chapter. So, great. We have any questions from the floor? Brothers want to hear you. <laughs> uh, I I heard you at the beginning when we asked about um, your three Ps and what you stand on inside of your um, inside of your platform. I heard you mention, which I've never heard before, a district surgeon general. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard that. So are we, not we, but is your stance to, to get some focus on health when we show up to districts or throughout the year? Yeah, no, the, the District Surgeon General will work with the Health and Wellness Committee from a regional perspective, uh, as well as the general organization, District Surgeon, or Surgeon General, rather, uh, because we do need a focus on preventative health engagement. Uh, I don't think we focus on it enough, and we can't impact and service our communities in a meaningful way. Uh, if we're broke, busted, and disgusted, uh, as the turn of phrase says. So let's make sure that we're investing in ourselves, uh, focusing on our internal medicine. Uh, and I want to leverage Black doctors, Alpha doctor, uh, in that cause. Uh, those doctors will be featured on the Continuum of Support Network, uh, which is going to be a digital platform that we want to set up so brothers can peruse it. Uh, that's where the affinity groups will be stored. Uh, so I am uh, really excited about the work that the district surgeon general is going to get done uh, because he's going to bring uh, best practices from the work that Brother Dr. Sterling is doing at the general level uh, to the district and make it more tangible. Uh, and there will be some, you know, healthcare professionals on the district level that will want to get in on the effort uh, and talk about health trends that are impacting our state uh, that we need to be aware of and giving focus to. So. Thank you, Brother Holland. I saw the chat. Brother Jones said, we, the committee, have been working on, working hard to make those things happen. Thank you, Brother Jones. Are there any other questions? Do you have any other questions on the floor or from the floor? I have a question. Uh, good evening, brothers. Um, Brother Holland, my question is, are there any policies or procedures um, within the district that um, you're either looking to implement or maybe looking to change that you know of as of now? Yeah, so policies and procedures that I want to implement or change, uh, Brother McFadden, thank you for the question. Uh, we get a lot of emails, uh, and I want to make sure that the communications director creates a signature look and feel uh, for the communications that come from the office of the district director. Uh, I think that's important as we continue to navigate how we best communicate with the brothers. Uh, so once we get that communication strategy in place across. Brother Holland. Yeah. Can you start over again? You were frozen. Yeah, I seen it uh, glitch. I'm sorry about that, brothers. Yeah, what I was saying is I want to make sure that the communications director uh, gives the chapter, oh, uh, not the chapter, the district, a signature look and feel, right? So when we look at our website, we look at our social media channels, uh, we want them all to have the same look, the same feel, uh, so that when you see communication come out on it, you know it's official, uh, it's pleasing to the eye, it's digestible. Uh, that'd be the first thing, because with that, uh, I want to make sure that we invest in the platforms that we need to do our work and take our work out of email. Uh, so Brother McFadden, you know, I've been in a chapter we use Slack. Uh, I want to invest in Slack at the district level uh, and really create space for my committees 
uh, and those chairs to do work and communicate with the executive leadership team. Uh, so when we do the work, we're not doing it via email. Uh, we have a dedicated space to make that happen. So. Thank you, Brother McFadden. Yeah, thank you for that question, brother. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We when we <clears throat> when we look at Anchor and and the things that we um, are very strong at, what do you want to add to that? What do you want to add to the things that Anchor is strong at? So I, I think that Anchor is strong at uh, affecting change, uh, and I want to continue to to do that. You know, when we talk about the office of the district director, you have to work with six other uh, district directors. Uh, so finding a way to affect uh, and create common uh, touch points uh, in policy and in service across the, the other six states. I think it's something that we have relationship in doing, uh, but I, I definitely want to strengthen uh, our position in doing that and, and being a leader uh, at the forefront of, of anything that's going on from a regional perspective, uh, wanting North Carolina to be at the table uh, to support and to urge or nudge or uh, to just make things happen. Uh, I, I'd probably say it's, it's something that we're really strong at doing. Uh, and every conference I've been to, you know, we have really good brotherhood. I think we need to lean into the brotherhood uh, and, and make sure we leverage the brotherhood in the right way so that uh, the work that we do uh, isn't so heavy because we know why we're doing it. So, yep. But inside of Anchor as well, this is another Anchor question, yeah. um, and, and leaning towards our, our younger brothers, our, co our college brothers, Mm -hmm. Inside of that, um, you have assistant area directors that yeah. want to get around as well. Uh, and sometimes they don't have the, the the finances or mode to get around. What what do you say to that? Yeah, so, you know. The cool inside of the area, I'm sorry, inside of the area. Right, yeah, definitely. So the cool part about that is, you know, when we were in the conversations and the work we've done with the consortium, which is the Educational Foundation, uh, they have awarded uh, $1,000 stipends to the assistant area directors. Uh, I would like to see that continue going forward. Uh, but moreover, uh, I am in a very blessed position uh, with the career that I have. You know, when we talk about the the, the district budget is primarily conference, uh, you know, monies that are taken up and then there's a $100 apportionment and there's a $50 apportionment uh, from alumni and college chapters alike. Uh, I want to make sure that we take that $50 apportionment per college chapter and put it back towards our college brothers. Uh, so that as the assistant district director and area directors, uh, assistant area directors need to move around, uh, they have a pot that they can go and uh, request funds from to do that that type of work and, and goodwill. Uh, you know, kind of spreading the mission, checking in with the areas, checking in with other areas, working outside the district, et cetera. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Have any other questions, brothers? First day, you're elected Anchor District Director. Congratulations. Day one, what is the first thing you do? Day one, District Director elect or sworn in? Sworn in. Oh. Ready to go. <laughs> so I'm going to give you both answers. Uh, district Director elect, I'm taking a nap. Uh, <laughs> Sworn in, I, I plan to have the college, the Standard of Seven Commission up and running. Uh, I plan to start having conversations uh, with the other district directors and the regional vice president uh, on what he wants to see done. Uh, I plan on working with my executive director to get LDCEI uh, information solidified and communicated so that we can get our alumni chapters uh, engaged in getting our youth uh, to wherever that target location is going to be. Uh, so, and they're probably figuring out, uh, which email address I'm going to use. I was joking with Jason. I said, brother, I promise you when this is over, I'm cutting it down to one email because I feel like I got 18 right now. So, um, as, as a moment of levity, 
I'll do that as well. But you know, those those other priorities are definitely things I'm going to hit. So. Brother Holland, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Brother Hall, please. So, Brother Holland, tell us, tell us how your how your wife is feeling with about this whole process and where and where the I guess the level of support. I know she's probably giving you a hundred percent support, but can you go, you know, expound on how she's feeling about this whole process and you know what do you see her role as far as the 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 brothers that have significant others, what do you see her role in playing a part to bring the alpha wives and girlfriends together as relates to building that aspect of providing more the alpha wives aspect of having more activities for, for them during the district convention? Yes. So uh, I, I'm going to say it on here. I know I glitched and I was like, ah, I can't publish that one. But you asked me this question, so I got to publish it. My wife is invaluable. Uh, her support is unwavering. Uh, and I'm absolutely appreciative of, you know, the work that uh, she's helped me get done to this point. Uh, the cool part about it is we're both middle children uh, in our family dynamic. We're both A-type personalities. Uh, so she cuts it straight. And her expectation is that I receive it straight and don't read anything between the lines because what she said is what she said. Uh, so that is is the one thing that I absolutely appreciate about it. Um, and then, you know, uh, happy wife, happy life, you know, in the hustle and bustle of moving across the state. Uh, I cook every Monday uh, and I do my best to get the kids picked up uh, every day until I hit the road on the weekend. Uh, so I'm still very involved in the family dynamic because that was one of her requirements uh, for me to be able to do this work. Uh, so I'm not going to violate her goodwill uh, by not doing so. Uh, so uh, the role I see her playing uh, in you know, the context of getting the wives together uh, is to work with the convention chair uh, to plan uh, ladies' activities. I think the fact that I do have a missus that uh, is somewhat of a social butterfly, very hospitable and outgoing. Uh, that is something that we can bring back. Uh, we just got to make the dollars and cents match uh, to make it an enjoyable experience. Uh, but she definitely will pl play a vital role in that. And even moreover, uh, Brother Hall, the whole family dynamic, uh, I am a Jack and Jill dad. Uh, she is the vice president of her chapter. Uh, I want to do some collaborative things with Jack and Jill if we can. Uh, from a family perspective, you know, getting our families together, going on trips together, uh, figuring out what that signature trip is going to be, uh, you know, either year or by bi yearly. Um, and, I, and I probably just made a word up, but that's where I'm at with it. You know, finding things for the family to do as well uh, is something that I, I see her assisting us with greatly. So, thank you, uh, Brother Davis. Yes. Um, what have you learned most? about yourself going through this process. And the second part is, what do you think will be a learning curve for you if you become district director? <laughs> good question, Brother Davis. So learning curve, I don't always do a good job of reading between the lines. So I would say uh, I'm gonna have to get steeped in what that looks like, because I know there's a lot of nuance uh, to this role and a lot of uh, unwritten rules and unspoken agreements that I may or may not have visibility into. Uh, so just keeping my eyes and ears open uh, to be able to read uh, those nuances is going to be my learning curve. And the biggest thing that I've learned uh, to this point uh, is how to communicate effectively, be it written, be it verbal, uh, be it orally. Uh, it all matters and how you come across matters and how you uh, purport yourself matters uh, because everybody's watching. They're watching and they're going to continue to watch. Uh, so you have to make sure that you show up as the best version of yourself every day. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Brother Davis. Are there any other questions inside the open house? That seem like it, brother Hickman. Okay, tell us what is your next, what is your next engagement, and how can we follow you? 
if we want to talk more. Perfect. So next engagement, I will be at uh, Tranquility Cigar Lounge for a meet and greet. Uh, I'm going out to Area 2 uh, this weekend. Uh, I'll be with the uh, the brothers of Rho Alpha Lambda and Zeta Eta Lambda uh, this weekend. And I'm heading up to the infamous McDougal tailgate on Saturday at Carolina. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so that, that should be a good time. Uh, and then I'll speak to a couple of college chapters, uh, Beta Zeta and uh, Beta Epsilon on my way home on Sunday. Uh, so uh, hollandforanchor.com uh, is the website uh, and all of the socials are associated uh, to that website uh, that, that you can just click on and, and go there. Uh, also, the newsletter uh, should be coming out uh, tomorrow. A really cool article uh, in Louis Coe's Corner. Uh, just my perspective on what uh, the, the word or the phrase brother's brother uh, means uh, based on some uh, interactions and conversations I had last week. Uh, so really good uh, installation or issue of um, advance notice uh, for you to check out. Uh, so those are all of the um, consumable um, media items that you you can avail yourselves to over the next seven days for sure. Great. Thank you, Brother Holland, for your time. Absolutely. Be- before I go, I always ask this question. Uh, to brothers that have been in Alpha, who influenced you to become a man of Alpha for Alpha Fraternity Incorporated? The biggest influence I'd probably say would be hmm. So, I'm going to take a step back. I was talking to the, the chapter president of Ada Omicron tonight, right? And I'm first gen. I knew nothing about fraternities and sororities uh, before I got to Winston-Salem State. Uh, but once I got there, I did figure out that most of the fraternal men in my family were Omegas. Uh, so uh, I knew that I wanted to serve the community and I wanted to make an impact uh, so I'd have to say Harrison Conyers uh, was probably has been the most influential alpha since I've been in alpha. Uh, mm-hmm. He answered every call at 10 30, 11 o'clock at night when I was figuring out how to be at alpha. Uh, he wrote my recommendation letter uh, and, you know, his input has been invaluable uh, with everything that he's had uh, going on uh, through having kids, through you know, managing his life. He's always managed to make time for me. Uh, and for that, I will always make time for him and always be grateful to him for that. Uh, so uh, that was a that was a sentimental moment. I'm going to have to give him a call tomorrow. <laughs> give him a call. That's all, yeah. we, that's all they asked for. Absolutely. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Brother Holland, for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, good luck on the journey to Anchor District Director. Absolutely. Thank you for hosting, uh, Brother Hickman. I appreciate your time tonight. Brothers, thank you for joining. Thank you for your questions. Uh, You all know that I'm a phone call away if you need anything. Uh, So thank you and good night. Good night.